So to get back to this guy, get back to this guy, just a, a little bit about what I enjoy about making masks is um, you're always looking for ways that uh, you can show a character in a face. Um, and once you get it, you will alter your body to be able to go to the mask. The mask doesn't come to you, you go to the mask. And so, as a maker, what I really enjoy are things like, um, you're presenting a lot of little clues for people to begin to, to feed upon. So, um, you see the nose. The nose is actually, I thought, well, it's actually a teardrop, isn't it? If you look from the side, it's, it's as much a teardrop as anything else. Um, and the fact that the eyes, the eyebrows sort of go upwards, you've got that sort of very up and down, rainy day kind of feeling to him. And so that was very much what I wanted to put in the eyes, the slanting as well. And he's, he naturally wants to sort of look down. Um, now, when I start making masks, I, I don't start on the full scale. I do something like, um, like these over here. I mean, here we have, um, this is our, this is my maquette that I made for our Pinocchio that we're making at the moment. You can see he's very, um, he's very up. All the energy in that face is going up, 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 and the nose is pointing up at the same time. You can see he's got a lovely profile as well. So he's um, kind of optimism to that. You can see the very eyes are, are, are pulling, pushing out. And he's very enthusiastic, very innocent and very naive. Um, there are little things, uh, little things else that you can do. It's like you see that little bulge over there, it tends to show that there's something going on inside the head. It's, um, if you go back to the Victorians and their idea of, um, uh, you probably come across some pictures from time to time about, of, of uh, Victorians and their idea of criminals uh, and what makes a criminal head. Um, and they, they spent quite a lot of time, this is the beginning of the eugenics movement, so it's all stuff that's been massively cr uh, discredited now and is very unfashionable to talk about. But in fact, in terms of masks, um, first impressions count. And as far as I can see, these pictures were all based on first impressions. And I think, I think for me, I have the sort of Cro-Magnon head and wide nose. And I, I think I probably fit into sort of some kind of um, brutal murderer category in the Victorians. But um, it, psychologically, very much on first impressions. So with a mask, what you're trying to do is you're trying to hit those first impressions very hard and then add complexities and subtleties afterwards. So who have we got here? We've got... Um, so that's, that's Pinocchio. Let's bring up... Uh, I've got a fox and a cat, who are being played as, as sort of humans or masks, but although they have sort of cat-like and, and slightly fox-like qualities to them. So you can see that's, that is our cat character. Um, in my head at the time, I often hear voices of the mask, or as it comes, as I'm sort of working over the top of it. And um, this show is being set in sort of very poor Italy around about 20s, 30s. A little bit eclectic, but around that sort of time, when American films were actually quite, um, uh, they were beginning to set the fashion. And I, I did sort of imagine her as some kind of American film star, sort of element of Bette Davis to her. Um, but you can see all the little clues in the nose, the way the nose is turned up. Um, and then you have on him, you see the way again, the eyes are very, very open and sort of very, very keen to uh, avaricious eyes. But what I really love is the relationship between them two, because they don't uh, they, they kind of, they, they go around, in our show, they're going around pretending to be husband and wife and are con, a couple of cons. Um, and I rather like the relationship, once you put those two very different faces together, that begins to emerge. And in fact, the wonderful thing about masks is that as soon as you present the mask, they begin to make up stories in people's heads. That's what I love about them. Um, and so when I'm sitting here with these and sort of just playing around with them, they start to talk to me and I often find It'll take me sort of half an hour or so, or sometimes hour or longer. I often find, actually, the quicker, the quicker I've made it, the better the mask is. I will sit here, and I will end up with my face sort of morphing into what I'm making. And I'll be making the noise that goes with the mask itself. 